everyone, it's Di here from Di's Dan and welcome to November's Wednesday, Wednesday Wowser or Wowser Wednesday, I can't remember which way around it is at the moment my mind's gone a bit of a blank that's what happens when you have an operation you forget things or well, at least I have seemed to have well we're going to make this, it's a ball ball look how gorgeous is that, look it'll hang on your Christmas tree or you can fill it with goodies and you know you can just I don't know, seal it up if you want or leave it. It doesn't sit very nice if it's not sealed up on the top. So you could seal it, stick, uh, seal it up and give it to someone with a, a nice label on it. We're going to put a label on the one we're going to make today. So this measures approximately, let me see, three by three when it's completely like that, three inches by three inches that way. And it's gorgeous. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? It just floats around and it will hang on your Christmas tree or I guess you could put it on your ears for earrings. <laughs> no. But it's a lovely idea to put a couple of chocolates in to give to friends at work or something and you just seal them up and just say, well, you can open them up to eat the chocolates inside. And it's just a little bit different. So we're going to make this and it's really easy. There's not a real lot of stuff to it. So I'm going to be using some retired products and um, I'm going to use these tailor-made tags dies. Again, I love these dies and I'm going to be using the second size in this set here along with the little bit that goes on there because we're going to put our ribbon through it. Okay, I'm going to also be using my Crocodile, Crocodile, I don't know what it's called. I don't know, it just says memory keepers on it. I think it's called a Crocodile because it crops and chops and, or Chopodile. Oh no, I'm no good at that sort of thing. And I'm going to use some of these peeloffs. Look, I've, I've got so many of them and I thought this is a great way to use them for small projects. So I'm going to use this one here that says Christmas Wishes. So we're going to pop that over there. there. And... There's my tag. I'm just going to stick that little bit on the back so that I've got, whoops, I have got um, some reinforcement there. So I'll just do that now while I've got that on my mind and I don't lose that tiny little bit. So you pop that bit on the back so that it reinforces that hole so you line that hole up in there like that. So, okay, well this is it. This is all you need. How lovely is this? Now I used my one inch um, square punch, which is an old stamping up one, very old, but you can cut them out at one by one if you want to, but you need 18 of them. 18 pieces of card that measure one inch by one inch. Oh, designer series paper, sorry. You also need a piece of ribbon about 10 inches long. I think mine's a little bit longer. Mine's about 13 inches, but I just chomped the piece off. And you'll need to a piece of card that measures six and a quarter by ten and a half. And that's all you need. So I'm going to just pop the pin in my glue because it's a warm day here today, being November, and it's only a few weeks before summer. So let's pop that there, and I'm going to bring in my my um, scoreboard because we're going to do a lot of scoring today. So you're also going to need to have a pencil and a ruler for this project. So we're going to pop this on the long side, which is the ten and a half inch side, and we're going to score this using the small ball. The small ball says me showing you the big one. The small ball, and we're going to score this at one and a quarter inches. We're going to score this at two and a half. Oh crap! Excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> so I'm just going to rub that line out there. You're not going to see it anyway. Three and three quarters, five inches, six and a quarter, seven and a half. Eight and three quarters and ten. So we'll go through that again. One and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, 
eight and three quarters and ten. So we're going to turn it onto the short side now, and we are going to score this at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. So we've got all these squares on here, as you can see that we've got all these squares. So we're going to keep our tool and we're going to bring in our, um, we're going to fold and burnish the top, well, and the bottom one first. Because we're going to do a little bit of marking on this piece. So we're going to, I found this easier to do it on here. And you're going to mark this first one. The third one, the fifth one, and the seventh one. Not, not starting from the end with the small pit. Starting from the end without the little tab. So we're going to score this at, we're actually going to mark this, sorry, at five-eighths of an inch. We're going to miss the next one, and then we're going to mark this at five-eighths of an inch. We're going to miss the next one. And we're going to score the next one at five eighths of an inch. Miss the next one and score the next one at five eighths of an inch. And then miss the one next to our tab. We're going to turn this around and I'm going to do this. Oh dear. This way. So we're going to start again. So we're not going to do the first one because we we want it to match up. So we miss the tab. Miss the first one next to the tab. The next one we're going to score it up, mark it at five eighths. Miss one. Next one at five eighths, and you will see that you're right because it has to be the same corresponding. Miss one. Five eighths. Miss one. Five eighths. So we have these little marks on here at five eighths of an inch. Let's turn this around the right way. From the second one down. So the second, first one, third one, fifth one, seventh one. Same again on the bottom. So now we're going to fold and burnish all these score lines. Because I could have done that before, but I just find it easier that I haven't got to fight with the card going which way you like. second line down from the top so not the first score line the second score line up to that mark on an angle so we're going to do that on both sides of it so we have like a triangle in there and we're going to do that on all of them across this side so you should have one miss one. One that's triangled, scored, and you've got a missed one. So we cut these like this across the top here. The lighting here is a bit yucky for me today, but there you go. So we're going to turn that around and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So these will match up. You will have your score marks in exactly the same ones as the opposite side. So that they are opposite each other like so. So from there up to that mark. last one like so all right so now we can then can rub out those pencil marks because we don't need them there anymore let's turn that 
turn that around and do this side. Like so. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to do a little bit of cutting and we're going to start and it doesn't matter which end you start at, top or bottom, because it's the same. You're going to remove this tiny piece, rectangular piece on that end. You're going to cut up the next one and the next one and we're going to remove this one over the top of the scored piece. We're going to cut the next one and once again we're going to remove the square above the scored one. And once more Oops, come out of there. And once more. And where we've removed them on this side, we're going to turn this around and remove the corresponding ones. So once again, we're going to move, cut up here and remove the one up, which is with the score. And this little one on the end. So we have them all removed and they're identical top and bottom. So every one that has a score in the middle, I don't like that little bit there, like the triangle, has to be removed. So now they're going to actually fold and burnish these ones, which are going to be all valley folds. So we're going to fold that one and then that one right the way along on those folds this is a little bit tedious but with move, removing those other pieces before you do it you'll find that it actually folds so much better Bottom. So we're going to do that the other side as well. So oops. Now I've got a little bit of left over there. Remove those. I don't like that bit there, so I'm going to just remove that piece. That's that before I go on. Okay, so once we've done that, we're now going to put on our little pieces of designer series paper. Now I know I've got more than I need, I cut 20 case, I came across a couple that didn't punch out very well. Um, we're not going to put them all on, we're not going to put the ones on the top or the bottom, on this row or this row, we're going to pop the ones on the middle sections here. So when we pop them on here, we're going to pop them on every one of these squares that has not got a, a score in it. So everyone that's plain will get a one inch square in it. 
Now, if you don't want to watch me putting all of these on, that's fine. I, I don't have an issue with that. You can quite easily whiz past to the other side. If you have a directional pattern, make sure that you put your directions the correct way. And if you'll have whatever way you're having as the top, this or the bottom, this doesn't matter. Just make sure that you keep all your directions the same, especially if you've got like um, uh, oh, stripes. I had a mental blank then. Don't like it when I have a mental blank. Oh gosh, get off my finger. Some days those words just don't want to come out. I knew what I wanted to say, but it just wouldn't come out. So we're nearly there. You could put these on after you've put it together. I'll, I'll leave that entirely up to you. Um, I did with my first one because I wanted to um, see how many squares I needed. I didn't want to go cutting out heaps and I didn't need them. So stuck to my table. That was clever, wasn't it? Okay, um, two more. Oops. At the present time. And you should be left with two if you've done only the 18 of them. I've got four because I did cut 20. Okay, once you've done that, We'll just give that a nice push down so that we can see where we're going off. i put my pin in that glue for a minute because we don't need it for a minute. And I'm going to just, we're going to um, pop these together so that I can actually put a hole in the middle of these. So what I've done is I've pushed that together in there so that these two pieces here match together and then I'm going to Punch a hole, what I think is in the middle. Once I'm happy with that, I will move that along to the next one and bring the other one across so I can line it up and then I can see where the hole is punched. Well, I can if I'm very careful. There we go. Then I'm going to do that again with the last one. I guess I could have done it that way, couldn't I? I could have done it that way. It would have made it just a tiny bit easier to push that across. Get off of there. I uh, can't see now. There we go. Alright, so I've got my holes across what's going to be the top. Okay, so once I've done that, let's move all them bits out. We don't want holes along the bottom. We only want them across the top. So now we're going to actually glue this together. So we're going to pop glue onto our tab piece here. Get out of there, pin. Now we want to make sure that there's plenty there to hold it nice and tight. I'm going to bring this one over, matching it up with the score lines like so. This one is the one that's going to be the hardest one to bend because we haven't put a score on those and we can't score that now again until that is really dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can bend that into that score line now. 
a little bit. There we go. And the same at the other end. I'm going to squish it with my finger. I don't know if I can get my bone folder in there to do that. Oh yes, I can get my bone folder in there to do that. Let's do that. I'll do the top one as well now. The same way. Just so that we know that when we put this together, that they are going to go in the right way. Alright, so starting from the bottom of our bat box, we are going to glue these two pieces together across from each other, like so. And we need to make sure that they go together nice and square. So we're going to pop some nice amount of glue onto this one. And we're going to bring this one across over to the top, like so. Once we've done that, we're going to hold up for a few seconds so that we know that it's stuck and that it's square. Because if we don't have that square, we're not going to be able to fold those side ones in like so. Okay, once we've done that, we can now pop some more glue onto the top of this one. And we're going to bring in one of the sides. It doesn't matter whether you want to bring in the left or the right first. It doesn't make any difference as long as you bring one in and you square it up. By squaring it up, you're going to get that lovely crisp piece here in each one. So once we've got that in there, we're going to do the last one on the bottom. So we're going to pop some more glue onto the bottom of this one. And as I say, you want to make sure that you've got a nice amount. You could do it with red liner tape, except with red liner tape, if you haven't got it in the right place, it's stuck there, unfortunately. Okay, so once we've done that, we can turn that over, open that up, and we can just give that a knock down, knowing that that's straight on the bottom. And we're going to now put one of our pieces of card, uh, designer series paper onto the bottom of this one. Okay. Now this is where you would fill it if you're going to fill it. If you're going to just use it as a ball ball, that's okay. But if you're going to fill it, this is where you would fill it. So we are now going to pop our ribbon together through the hole. Any one of the holes, it doesn't matter which one. My goodness, I've got to get it through the hole, yep. <laughs> and we want to make sure that it's quite together at that end. Go through there. We're going to bring that up as, and then we're going to put a little bit of tape. Now I've only got some double sided tape here. I haven't got any like sticky tape or I used um, like masking tape on the other one. But it doesn't matter. We're not going to open it, so we're just going to leave that on there like that. And it's just so that this doesn't pull through. So once we've done that, as I say, we're going to bring these in. Whichever one's going to be the last one, we will pop that on after. Now, because I'm, I want this to all bring in nicely, you can do this by just putting your ribbon through. But I found that by just putting my ribbon through, it didn't pull in very nicely. I will show you. It doesn't pull in real nice and tight. But we can leave it like that if we want and not tie it off. Alright, so we, I'll show you and then if you wanted to, you, I'm not going to, to glue this one down. I've glued the other one down because I won't, won't use that one. But you can then glue this down so that they're all nicely in line. With our last one, we're going to glue our piece on the top. Over our hole. And then we're going to bring in our hole punch line it up 
and punch our hole out again. So as I say, I had two extra, which I have got there. And we're going to pop that through that hole. And as you can see, it does pull up, but nowhere near as nice as the other end. So this one has pulled up much better than the last one did. So that's our bauble. So we're just going to do our little tag. So I'm going to pop my pin in the glue because I'm just going to use these peel-offs that say Christmas wishes. So I have so many of these because when I used to just craft normally without my stamping, I used to use a lot. But now I don't. I, I find that I am just using my stamps and my embossing powder. So I'm going to pop one of these. I think, no, they're too big, those stars. I think that star would be, well, it might fit on there. We'll have a look. If it doesn't, well, we'll pop it, take it off and pop it back. Oh, yes, that goes on there nicely. And I have one of these lovely little things I'm going to put on here, one of these little red things over that star in the middle there, like so. And then we're just going to pop this onto our ball ball. Maybe it's because the last one I made, I didn't use a very thick ribbon. I use a very, very thin ribbon and it didn't really um, go together real nicely. As you can see, this ribbon was very, very thin. Maybe it's because of that it didn't sit together nicely. But that's our project. That's our Wales on Wednesday project. What do you think? They're lovely good ball balls. They're quite, as I say, a nice size. You could fit a lovely couple of uh, Ferrero Rochers or something nice inside it for somebody. And I just think they're just gorgeous. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you on Sunday with another normal project. And I'm not sure whether we will have a Wednesday Wowser for December. I will have to look at the calendar and see what's dates are coming up because and I will mark, at the end of the month I will let you know how many projects there will be in um, no, December and what dates I will be finishing up and what dates I will be starting up again in the new year so I hope you've enjoyed that I love this this is gorgeous and I will see you again on Sunday bye for now